All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, Salakia Malu, I'm not uh, feeling too well. Uh, but I wanted to uh, put this lesson out. Um, which is a precepts, you know, I have a lot of precepts here I gathered and uh, it deals with the importance Okay of the Lord's name and knowing his name. All right in order for you to be delivered You're gonna have to know his name You know and that uh, with that being said reading my first precept here. This is Amos chapter 3 and 7 It says surely the Lord Yahweh Will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets All right now, when you see God there, where it says, surely the Lord God, in all caps, that's talking about the Heavenly Father, all right? So what you will want to do is, you know, say the Lord's name, all right? Since we know the name of the Lord, all right? Now, this show is for the elect, all right? For brothers, women who, you know, coming into this truth and uh, seeking the Lord's sincerity. You know, it's a, it's a certain way. That you read these scriptures so you can have the proper understanding. All right. Because in order to understand uh, the book of Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1. All right. You, the proper understanding is that you know that the powers. You know that God could mean powers. It also could mean, the, you know, Allah Hayim, You know, meant the angels. So you will have to know these few things when you read. All right. So I'm going to read again. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God, Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets all right so the lord will do nothing you know until he reveal his secret unto his servants the prophets all right the heavenly father has always dealt with the prophets when he sent the son in the earth all right born from a man uh, uh uh carried in the womb of a woman you know having a natural birth like everybody else guess what all right, he came looking for the prophets. All right, to start his ministry off, Yahweh Shai, he went looking for who? The Lord, the Heavenly Father's prophets. All right, so the Lord has always dealt with the prophets, and the scripture here says he revealed, it says he will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the Lord deals with the prophets. All right, and even scriptures say the prophets are subject to the prophets. So these prophets are not just anybody. These are handcraft, uh, let's say, from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Now, I don't want to say handcraft, but they are craft, all right, to be that chosen spirit that the Most High put out in this world. And they always be the same, all right? So, when the prophets are subject to the prophets, meaning that these men, all right, they, they hear, you know, then they die, then they come back, and they do the same work, all right, until the work is finished. So, um... Let's get down to the next one. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Who have bound the waters in his garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou can tell? All right. So here in Proverbs 30 and 4, the scriptures say who have established all the ends of the earth because all this great work. You know, all this earth that we're living in, we see in the grass, you know, you see the birds, the trees, it rains, it snows, the seasons change. You know, who did it? All right. Who have established all the ends of the earth? It says, what is his name and what is his son's name? If thou can tell, because why? The heavenly father has a name and his, and his uh, only begotten son, which means first spirit created is Yahweh Shai has a name. All right. And it's not God in Jesus Christ. First off, God is just a title, which the Hebrew word means Allah, okay? And Jesus doesn't mean shit, all right? So, I believe Elder Apostle Sahar called it something around pig, something. I can't think of it accurately right now, but it really is nothing, all right? And um, really debunk that too, the Jesus, is because the letter J, I believe, didn't come around the English alphabet until the, what, 14th, 15th century, all right. And before that, they use the letter I. So what the hell is Jesus? You know, to dig even more further common sense, you know, 
if Yahweh was a, if the Lord Yahweh who the word ignorantly called Jesus Christ, if he was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah, wouldn't he have spoken Hebrew? Wouldn't his name be in Hebrew? Wouldn't okay? Wouldn't his language be Hebrew? Wouldn't his parents have spoken to him in Hebrew? If he's a Hebrew Israelite, and that's just common sense, man. All right. So, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha, this is chapter 17 and 8. It says, he set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever that they might declare his works with understanding. The elect shall praise his holy name. You see? Because the elect is the prophets, starting with the prophets. All right? And they're going to know his name. So the elect shall praise his holy name. So you can, you know, strain out a neck and get mad and believe what you want to believe. But the scripture says the elect shall praise his holy name. So it's all about the Lord's name. All right. One thing that, you know, you learn when you first wake up, when the most high blows breath upon you and you wake up to this truth, knowing you a Hebrew Israelite. But also knowing the name of the power, okay? Knowing the name of your God that chosen you, okay? That chosen your forefather, who was the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know? This is common sense, man. You know, this, this uh, you know, the name of the Lord is not hard. It's just guys that are, uh, you know, like Nate, Nate Satan. He's a, a wolf in sheep clothing, all right? Him and his congregation. You know, I wanted to... Um, I want to read this here, this little snapshot a brother sent to me the other day dealing with this uh, this uh, Hitler speech that he, well, I guess he wrote this down. I don't know the resource of the book, but, you know, I wanted to read that because, you know, I personally believe with Nate, you know, he sold out a long time ago and he's just fulfilling his will, you know, to do his bid and his behalf. All right. Far as Satan, you know, because. It doesn't make sense at this very time to, uh, you know, think or, pr or push that the name of the Lord is uh, is uh, something light, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain, I should say. All right. Because that's all what he's doing, taking the Lord's name in vain. All right. You don't disrespect. All right. The uh, your master, you don't disrespect the power that created you. OK, you don't take his name in vain. All right. You don't disrespect that. You honor that. You don't dishonor that. You know, you're a fool. What the Lord say, though, uh, all, uh, those that hate me love death. You know, so the Lord got a lot of killing to do, man. And it will be tons and millions, all right, of you Israelites dying because of your pride. Now, Psalms 145 and 21. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, Yahweh, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And you better believe in the kingdom all right, when the Most High, Yahweh Shai, all right, change our bodies, okay, and we rule, we have these other nations in captivity, they're going to be beaten into submission and brought up to learn to praise our Father and the Son, all right, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So all flesh will bless His holy name, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Forever and ever. Now, Proverbs 8, 18 and 10, it says, The name of the Lord, Yahweh, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So to say that you could call on any name, why does this scripture say this? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. All right. Because why? Those who know the name. All right. And not only just know the name, but not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. This is your power. This is what you call. You know, when, when you're in trouble or, you know, when you're happy and rejoicing, you give praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? If we don't have the name, then we don't have nothing. That's why I read in the very beginning, what's that, Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So you better believe his name was a secret. All right? Especially when we had to discontinue from our heritage, and now we're getting it back. So he revealed his name unto us. All right, and to, to my elders and apostles and their elders, man. All right. So the name of the Lord, Yahweh, is a strong tower. The righteous, notice it said the righteous, not the wicked, the righteous runneth into it 
and it's safe. So go ahead and call them Yo Play Yogurt. Go ahead and call them whatever you want. But the scriptures say the righteous runneth into it and is safe. You know? Uh, this is Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord Yahweh, thou power in vain. For the Lord Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And that's why a lot of you guys are in trouble. You know, you shouldn't be abbreviating the name of the Lord neither. You know, calling him Yah, Jah. Call his name Yahweh, which Yahweh means he is or he to be. Call him by his proper name in which he told Moses for the children of Israel to call him. You know, why would you abbreviate the master's name? Okay, why would you abbreviate the heavenly father name like that? That's disrespect, man. But a lot of these guys out here, they do what? Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, thou power in vain. They take the name of the Lord in vain. For the Lord Yahweh will, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So guess what? You're not spotless. Okay, you're really, the Lord sees you and you're full of blood. All right? So you're not guiltless, man. You are guilty. Matthew 6 and 9. After the manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thou name. All right? So the name of the Lord, the Heavenly Father, hallowed. Okay? Hallowed be thy name. Now, let me just do a quick definition search and see what we got. Okay. It says hallowed. Hallowed is used to describe something that is respected and admired. Ooh. It says usually because it is old, important, or has a good reputation. You see that, man? Whew. All right. It says hallowed is used to describe something that is respected and admired. All right. We respect Yahweh Bashem Shai. We admire Yahweh Bashem Shai. Okay. Yahweh Shai came in the flesh and made it possible for us to get back to the Heavenly Father through him. So we admire Yahweh Bashem Shai, man. We respect them. Usually because it because it is old. Who's old? Hey, the Heavenly Father being is it isn't not his nickname the ancient of days? Okay, isn't Yahweh Shai the first spirit created? It says because it is old important yep the name of the lord is important or has a good reputation and our heavenly father and his son yahweh shah has a great reputation even though when yahweh shah was here in the flesh he didn't take on no reputation and that's what gave him a good reputation all right because he was perfect all right some of these guys like like nate satan and the rest of these guys out here they take on a reputation as a man you know and when you take on that reputation as a man, you know, they make it seem like they can't be reproved. You know, they develop that spirit of pride. You know, I really believe that, you know, Nate, he wants to be honored and reverence and, you know, on a high level so bad. But not realizing that if he apologized and made amends with the elder apostles here at Great Millstone and showed humility, the Most High will exhort him even more. But because of his pride, all right, and his contention, you know, with the truth and being reproved, he's going to be brought low. All right. And he's going to be um, not not a uh, I uh, can't think of the scripture word for word, but basically he's going to be destroyed, man, lest he repent. So anyway, let me see my time. OK, I'm going to try to keep it under 20. This is Matthew six and nine. After this manner, therefore, pray ye our father, which art in heaven. Hallow be thy name. All right, so so put some respect on his name, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Proverbs eighteen ten, the name of the Lord. Okay, we read that. I told you in the beginning. I do, by accident, put the same scriptures, in certain time, in certain cases. All right, for Philippians two and ten, that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow. Now, instead of seeing Jesus, I put Yahweh Shai there as it's properly supposed to be. Okay, so you can just go to your book app and you can read the scripture yourself. But I edited it and took that Jesus word out and put the proper name there. Okay, so it says that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai 
Hamashiach is Lord to the glory of the Most High, the Father. All right. So key key point here is an 11 and that every tongue. All right. What do you do with your tongue? You speak words. OK, you manifest. So it says that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. All right. Hamashiach is just anointed. You know, the English, they call it uh, Christ. So Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is Lord to the glory of the Most High, the Father. So every tongue is going to confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord. All right. And we're going to know that now. We're not going to have to wait to the kingdom in order to call a name upon his proper name. The Lord gave it to us now. All right. So that proves and cuts guys that may say or argue about we don't know the name yet. You know, you know, you, know, you don't know the name yet, but the Lord revealed his secret to his servant, the prophet. The prophets, the true men of the Lord, know the name. All right, this is Exodus 3 and 14. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Okay, now you got GOCC, they say Ahiah. All right. Now when Moses, you know, when the most high told Moses his name, it says, I am that I am. But if Moses would have went to the Israelites and told them, I am that I am sent me, you know, it wouldn't even have sounded right because they would have been thinking Moses is saying this about himself. So what did Moses say? Moses said he is that he is or, or he is or he to be. OK, and for to tell someone the Lord's name, you would say he because you're not referring to yourself. You will refer to him. OK, so he is or he to be. That's what Moses said to the children of Israel, not a higher. OK, I am. You know, imagine Moses going, imagine someone today, you know, saying I was sent, you know, I, I had you in school and shit. And one teacher send you off to another teacher and you say, I am sent me. You're like, what? You know, so anyway, it says Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. You see that? So there's no other name, okay, besides his true name, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. It says, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So therefore, we will have to know the name. Because Paul said, whereby we must be saved. And you look at the times we're living in now, all right? You look at this first covert operation we're living in. And we're going into the second one, all right? When Esau is establishing his world domination and New world order. We of let's say those of the elect, okay, the hopeful elect must be saved. All right, saved from what? Saved from microchipping, digital vaccines, okay. Ultimately, that thermonuclear destruction by the ways of World War Three. All right, from the great uh, slaughter that's coming upon the wicked. So whereby we must be saved. So we're gonna know the name. Psalm sixty-one and eight. So will I sing praises until thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. All right. So we're going to know the name to call upon. How are you going to not have a name or call any name? If I want it right now to say computer, I call on my computer. Well, that's stupid, man. I call on towel. I call on rag. That, that don't make sense. I pray into a rag. That's idol worshiping, man. All right. Uh, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with uh, Allahayim, which which is power, all right? But in, it means Allahayim, the powers, all right? And the word was Yahweh, all right? And that's why, you know, therefore the Lord, you know, makes this a mystery because only the elect could understand, you know, the proper context of these scriptures, all right? And the proper context of this scripture, all right, is John 1 and 1, is that in the beginning was the word, which is Yahweh Shai, and the word was with what? The powers, okay, with an S in the Hebrew, Allahayim. It says, and the word was Yahweh, all right? Because why? Ultimately, the Heavenly Father, you know, we like to say, uh, gave that uh, blueprint, okay? He gave the the power, you know, the, the, the power to give to Yahweh Shai and the angels, to create everything that exists. All right. But who takes the who gets all the credit for it? Yahweh. All right. Because without him, it couldn't be done. 
All right, Isaiah 45 and 5. I am the Lord, Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no God, no power beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Check that out. All right, Yahweh, he says, there is none else. So meaning our Heavenly Father, he don't take no orders or, you know, sit down and conversate with um, any other power that could dictate and calculate him. He's telling you now, I am the Lord, Yahweh. Okay, he is or he to be, meaning he's the supreme uh, power. It says, and there is none else. There is no power beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. All right, and the Lord did that to the elect because we was in a Gentile frame of mind. And we didn't know the Lord, but the Lord came through and helped us. All right, and got us to the point to wake up in his truth. And we've been calling on his name ever since. All right, this is um, Exodus 3 and 15. It says, And Yahweh said moreover to Moses, the, uh, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord Yahweh, the power of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, the power of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Check that out. That's, that's, that's cut right there, man. Okay, he said, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial. What is memorial? Remembrance. So, did the scripture say, uh, remembering the things we once knew? All right, if the Lord was going to wake us up and let us know who we are as, as uh, a people, being the Hebrew Israelites pertaining to the, uh, the tribes from the seed of our fathers, would not the name, the memorial of his name be given back to us, the remembrance of it? Come on, man. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations, man. Isaiah 42 and 8, I am the Lord Yahweh, that, uh, that is my name. And my glory will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. All right, that is my name. Hmm. All right, um, yeah, I queued this up again. I can see I doubled it twice. And, um... I'll read the 13. And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and, say, and shall say unto them, the, the power of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they, shall, <gasps> and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Yahweh said unto Moses, I am that I am. All right. He is or he to be. All right. So we went there. Let's jump. Isaiah 52 and 5. Now, therefore, what have I here? Say of the Lord Yahweh, that my people is taken away for north, that thou that they that rule over them make them to howl, say of the Lord Yahweh, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. You know, you got jokers out here blaspheming the name of the Lord like it ain't nothing, man. It says, Therefore my people shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. Alright, so you know, we're married, all right, chosen from the Heavenly Father, and we're married unto Him. So when the Israelites went off and the Most High scattered us wherever nation and we went to, all right, we, you know, shamed, shamed the name of the Lord. Because why? We're Yasha Allah, man. All right, at a point, all the other nations knew who we was, all right? We knew who we was. And it says here, therefore they shall know in that day, what is that day? Now, that I am He that do of speak behold it is i how do the lord speak he speak through his prophets all right now when his prophecies are being manifest you're going to know that there was a prophet or let's say prophets among you and you're going to know it was the lord speaking to you this is matthew 28 18 19 all right i'm gonna try to speed this up before the 30 mark it says and yahweh came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And GMS, all right, starting with our apostles here at Great Millstone, here at Great, at Great Millstone, we, we do that, teaching all nations. Why? Because Israel was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, and it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's why we say, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. All right, there ain't no other group doing that. You know, and it's not about a group thing. It's just about, it's a truth thing. All right. So, you know, when you say get it right, you know, the apostles and elders 
Hey, I great millstone and the men on down got it right. Okay. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rakah Kodash. Uh, Jeremiah 16 and 20. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord Yahweh. All right, Leviticus 19 and 12. Ooh, got a few for more. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy power. I am the Lord, Yahweh. Okay, he is. I am Yahweh. All right? So you shouldn't swear falsely on the name of the Lord. All right? Nor profane his name, because his name is hallowed. All right? Exodus 34 and 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, Yahweh, whose name is jealous, is a jealous power. Okay? And yeah, this is scripture to cut on you Edomites. All right? We don't belong to you. You're not about to have a new world order. We're not about to be digital vaccinated or, or microchip, all right, living in what he, what he calls utopia, his new world. Because why? The Heavenly Father is a jealous power. He's jealous of us, who he made of him, being joint unto him, and you, got us in, in, um, and you got us in possession. So the Lord is coming back to fight for us, all right, because why? Our Heavenly Father is a jealous power. Now it says, Psalms 20 and 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord, Yahweh, our power. All right. We will remember the name of the Lord, Yahweh, our power. Deuteronomy 5 and 11, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power in vain. For the, for the Lord, Yahweh, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And that's a cut on you, Nate, and any other you guys. All right. Taking the name of the Lord in vain. All right. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I did want to uh, do something on this with Hitler. I'll read it real quick. How much time? I got three minutes. All right. It says, Hitler said, because the white Jews know that the Negroes are the real children of Israel and to keep American secret, the Jews will blackmail America. The will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes know who they were. Mm -mm. There you go. The white citizens of America will be terrified to know that all this time they have been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the children of Israel. They will fear God will destroy them as he destroyed Egypt for doing the same thing. So the elite and the Illuminati keeps this a secret at all costs. It says, after I die, I will one day cause World War III just by the message, which will be like planting a seed in the people's minds until it sprouts once they nurture that seed and seek more truth and learn Hitler was right. All right. And you better believe that they wanted to keep it a secret. But all right. The the trick is out the hat, man. All right. Esau's being exposed because Paul made mention how he's going to be revealed in his time. The son of perdition. So this is something, like I said, a brother sent me. And um, I don't know the book or nothing. But, you know, here it is. I hope uh, the whole full elect will edify. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.